Hi, welcome to the channel. Gary here. So I've just recorded Start Me Up and I'm hoping to have time to do another Stones track today. It's got a little bit of time this afternoon to do some recording at home. So I've decided to have a look at Brown Sugar, an amazing Stones song, some great guitar parts to be had here. So again, we're in open tuning. We're going to break it down, go right through it. Uh, we'll get close up, look at all the parts. As always, if you're new to the channel, then please, please give me a like, subscribe, ring the bell. You get to see new content as and when I release it. So anyway, let's get straight into this one. We'll get close up and we'll look at Brown Sugar. Okay, so we're in up close. This one is in open G tuning, classic Keith Richards tuning. We're tuning our six string E down to D. The A string goes down to G. D string stays the same. G stays the same. B stays the same. And our first string, E, that goes down to a D string. Tone wise, I've got some crunch through the amp. Uh, bit of reverb, bit of compression, but that's it. Song starts like this. I'll play the first few motifs and we'll break it down. Alright, so it's classic Keith Richards stuff this in an open chord tuning. We're starting on the 12th fret, barring across. Um, I'm not really playing the, the 6th string, I'm playing from the 8th string really. And then we're doing the suspension shape, so I'm holding B at the 13th fret and D at the 14th fret. And then taking them both off. But it's mainly that, it's mainly that B string that you hear. You can play with some rhythm with this, sort of try and get some feel into it. Keith's a very, very feely player, I can't stress that enough, so it's really... Take that down to the 5th fret. muting with the palm of my hand to punctuate these phrases. Um. You don't want it all kind of... You've got to really put a lot of percussion into it and uh, feel uh, with your strumming hand. Varies it, uh, it's impossible to break down every tweak and variation that Keith puts in, but the first one is sort of. Alright. So that's the first motif. While that's playing, the second guitar um, comes in with a very sort of identifiable riff. It sounds like this. So you've got this. So I'm just sliding up there on the A string from 3 to 5, then an open D string, and then D3 to D5. The next part on Keith's guitar sounds like this. Simple stuff, um, but just some slight subtle variations in this. So, um, the, the main one is that we're not using our normal two fingered suspension on every chord there. 
So I'm barring at the 8th fret there. And I'm just going to play the G string. So I'm not doing... I'm not doing our usual B string. I'm just on the G string. And we go down to the 5th fret. There I'm just on the B string. So here I'm just on the G. To the B string there, and then we go down. Down to the first fret, okay? When you come into this section from the introduction, the you want to sort of slide up. Next we go down to the first fret, and there I'm just barring across again, but I'm just on the G string again this time, and then slide up. Again just on the G string there. And then when we get to the fifth fret, string all right so I'll just play through that section slowly if we get there the second time we play that through it's the same like, apart from there he plays on the B string that time so he slides up then again on the B string the, on the 5th fret. So that second phrase and that's the introduction. As always listen to the record closely you know on that introduction the the strumming technique as I said before is really important you want to get it punctuated uh, Using mainly downstrokes actually. You can on those suspensions you can strike upwards. Sometimes hear that first in the chord when I listen to it. You slide up there, so that's down up down. Following the introduction we come into the first verse and Keith's guitar, uh, we're in the key of C here so this is the top of a, a C bar chord taking account of the, the tuning. Okay so his guitar is going to do something like this. So you see how he's playing on the offbeat. You don't need to be too particular where these accents and everything come in. It's very much a feel thing as I said in previous Stones tracks. But he is playing on the offbeat because the other guitar is doing the sort of more of a traditional rhythm guitar part there. And Keith can then sort of sit back and That's the kind of feel you're looking for there. So I'm just sliding that bar up from the 5th fret there to the 10th fret. And he varies it throughout the track. I'll play through that again and uh, we'll, we'll go through the verse as it leads into the chorus part. So 
there we're just taking the bar down to the third fret. Just around midnight. And then we get our open chord, it's the open G chord. I'm just playing it from the, the A string there. Play something like that. So that's just, I'm on the B and G strings there. You can include the, um, the D string if you want to, but I, I prefer just to play it mainly on the B and G strings. So all together, that verse going into the chorus sounds like this. into a the other guitar for the chorus part does something like this so I'm just sliding in there on the A string two to four then an open D string and then D at the 5th fret. Then it's just a sort of bluesy. Just pushing the B and G strings there at the 3rd fret. Back to the D5. Then off back from the fifth to the third. We get this uh, repeat of our original. Then we're into the second verse. I'll play through another verse then, going into the chorus for practice. Sounds like this. to say in those pre-choruses uh, that I mentioned before in the last verse might be that it might be the last two choruses actually we get this sort of you should have heard him just around midnight so that's what we did the first time you should have heard him just around midnight I think towards the end it goes something like you should have heard him just around So just a, another little variation that Keith throws in. So just to recap, it's really important to get these uh, two different guitar styles right if you're playing a band with two of you. Know, one of them's playing the, the regular rhythm guitar. Just taking my third finger on and off the, the D string there. The seventh fret. Ties more. Playing off the beat, alright? As always, refer to the, the track for you know the full uh, 
format of all these different parts. I'm just showing you the individual component parts. We got a saxophone solo and uh, the guitar part, a bit like the introduction that we did before, only there's a, another slight difference which I'll just show you. So in the introduction where we did this, what Keith does during the sax solo is instead of just playing that G string with the bar like we did earlier on, he does a suspension but this time it's with the B string and the G string. So it sounds like this. So it's subtly different. From that, for that last one, I think he's just on the B. Or maybe the traditional suspension with the B and the D strings there, not, not the G. Then follows a third verse, much the same as we've looked at before. of course every time that happens is doing the like we looked at before all right towards the end of the track there's quite a big fade out and Keith again sort of starts mixing it up there sort of it's when the vocals are going I say yeah 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 Woo, that so you've got the suspension using the open chord but B1 and D2 So you can alternate between them. Strumming from the A string. make it your own, adapt it, play, incorporate these different things. You can also play up at the, the 12th fret, like we did in the introduction, it's just the octave of that one. Keith there is it at the end playing between those different positions. There's a riff that comes in towards the end, I'll show you that in a moment. Just on the chords though, um, as it goes into the outro at the very end, it sounds like there's a seventh in the chord. Sounds like it ends with the seventh, so with my little finger, I'm just barring the first and second strings there at the eighth fret. So we've got this sort of. As the track progresses, we get near the end and we get these chords before the fade out, just... <laughs> Vocals, so... I say yeah, 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 woo! It's a little riff that comes in, uh, it sounds something like this. a sort of old school rock and roll riff but because we've got the first string tuned down normally we'd be barring the first two strings at the third fret and playing them but because we tuned down on the first string we have to move our finger up to the fifth fret 
to get the same sound. Normally it would just be there. And just on the, on the G string. From 5 to 3 and then D5. Just a bit of vibrato on the you also just push that I'm playing the G and the B really there you can play it just on the G I'm catching the G and the B I think it sounds better and then you land on D5 take that shape up to the 8th fret and we get this so I've got my first finger on B8 and my little finger on E10. Back down. It's the same shape. I think that goes around six times. On the very last one, instead of just repeating the exact same riff, you get this. So I'm just holding B8 and G10. And just sort of doing a sort of double stop bend. Bending the B up. Keeping the, the B string at the eighth fret fairly still really just bending on the on the B on the G string. And then we just resolve there, that's the seventh shape, so I'm holding D10, G9 and B11. Matches this seventh shape I showed you before. So, those are all the parts for Brown Sugar, two guitar parts. I think there's more than two guitars on the original recording. I think there's some acoustic guitar going on as well on the, on the studio version, but I think that's close enough. You know, it's great fun to play. It's classic Stones classic Keith Richards. So have fun with that one. As always guys, enjoy your guitar playing and I'll see you very soon.